And now I wanted to talk about today the two most important accessories uh, that I use in my filming uh, for my running vlogs. And these are the two most important run vlogging accessories that I have. Just got back from my run. Well, I didn't just get back. Uh, I got back a little while ago and then I had to jump on a phone call for work uh, real quick. But I'm back from the run, phone call's done. And now I wanted to talk about today the two most important accessories uh, that I use in my filming uh, for my running vlogs uh, today. And this is a video that I've been wanting to make for uh, quite a while. But for whatever reason, um, just being tired, uh, scheduling didn't work out and, and that thing over there uh, which is a bunk bed that I had to put together for the girls um, between all that stuff I just didn't get around to it but today I'm finally gonna do it and these are the two most important run vlogging accessories that I have and I want to talk to you about it today um, they're really important to my channel uh, the channel really wouldn't be uh, what it is without these two things um, the first thing that it is, is a Manfro, it's kind of like a C-clamp style um, iPhone holder. Let me get my phone real quick. Um, and so, here's my iPhone. Uh, this also worked with, uh, will work with a whole bunch of other phones. That's why it has this kind of expanding thing in here. Um, and the way that I use this is typically I will just put the phone in sideways, set the phone on the ground and use the rear camera. I'll set it for 1080 at six, uh, 120 frames a second and I'll set it on the ground and then I hit record and then I'll run in front of the camera and then I'll run kind of back. And it's kind of a guess and check and sometimes I change it depending on if I want to capture, focus on like my feet being really close to the camera or I want to capture what's going a little bit further away from the camera in terms of you know, how far or how close I run to it. Sometimes I'll step directly over the camera um, as I'm using it. Uh, but this is really important uh, because it has that flat bottom. It also has like a quarter 20 mounting point on it if you ever wanted to put it on like a selfie stick or a tripod. I don't think I've ever done that. Um, but uh, sometimes I do use this little kickstand to lean it back or if I even wanted a sharper angle. This is like the sharpest angle it has, so it's just a little bit of kickback. And then you're using um, the lens and it's shooting upward at an angle. So it gives you a little bit of flexibility, not a ton, but I don't need a ton. I, I don't want a ton. A lot of times it, having this just sitting on the ground or if there's like a ledge, a park bench, um, like a handrail, that kind of thing that this can sit on, um, putting the phone on that um, and shooting it is pretty much all I need. Most of my Instagram and Strava are driven completely, almost completely, by this little thing in the iPhone. Um, so a really important piece of kind of hardware that I use. It, um, I've seen things that are like this that are thinner, um, but not that are as robust um, or as useful as this one. So this one, this is my second one of these that I bought. Uh, I like them so much. I lost the first one in the lake along with another iPhone. Um, but uh, this is extremely useful. It usually fits right in my pocket, even my running shorts, and I can run with these and I won't feel like it's bouncing around. So that's extremely helpful. The next thing I have is this. It's a little alligator clamp. It's like $5 on Amazon. Um, it goes for your GoPro. And so this is a GoPro. I have the Hero 5. Um, here, this is what it comes in. I've seen a lot of people that try to run around with their GoPros like this. And what you get a lot of times, because you're holding it like this or like this, 
the, this camera is so wide that it'll catch the webbing uh, on your hand. And so either that or because you're holding it in your hand and you're sweating, you're, you have a tendency, if you're holding it like this when you're running, that sweat gets all over, over the lens. And so what I've done, and I've had one of these for the last GoPro that I had as well, which is the GoPro Hero 3, I think, is you put it in the housing and you put it on one of these clamps and you use your bolt and you put it in here. And then you can use this uh, in a couple of ways that I think are really useful. Most of the time I run with it like this. And so it's like kind of like a mini selfie stick and I hold it a little bit like a ping pong paddle uh, yeah, Asian guy, ping pong paddle reference. Um, and so I can run with it like this. My fingers stay away from the lens, so I'm not accidentally either dripping sweat onto it or accidentally palming the lens to make it all gross. Um, but when I want to shoot, I'll hit the button. I usually have it on like the one button, like auto record. And then now I've got, um, so let me turn it on so you can see it. Then I can have a shot of me um, as I'm running. So I can do it like this, or I can get like an overhead shot, a low shot looking up. A lot of times I'll hold it back behind me as I run. So you can kind of see a little bit of what's ahead of me as well as me. Sometimes I'll have it pointing straight down at my feet. So you could see my feet as I'm running. Of course, I don't hold it like this. I hold it out like in, in front of me, um, but just so you could see the camera. So I'll hold it like this so you could see my feet, or I might hold it out in front of me so you could see kind of like my legs coming at you. Uh, I don't care if it's upside down because I'll just flip it around in the video editor anyway. So this is extremely useful. So this um, is how I run and vlog my long runs, like my 20 mile runs, any long run where I don't really want to stop and set the iPhone down. Um, this is the prime tool. But uh, for most of my runs, like if there's like on the vlogs that there, the entire vlog is just the run, and you'll see a mix of really, really wide shots and then really, really close shots. Uh, that are low to the ground. It's because every once in a while I'll stop, put the phone in this thing, um, take a shot, and then as I'm going I'll take some shots like this. Um, so I'll mix it up. But on longer runs when I don't want to take long breaks, then I'll just bring this. I won't even bring this guy with me. I'll just bring this. I'll still have my phone for Strava and for music. Um, but I'll just use this to uh, capture all the footage. And so uh, the other thing that you can do with this is um, you can also set it flat. So just like we use the phone here, I had this thing sitting in here flat, like this, as I was taking a, as I would take a shot. We can also have this thing sit flat and take a shot as well. And so if I want to get something really low and really wide, that's what I'll do is I'll leave this down here. A lot of times, if I'm by like a really big puddle. Um, then I'll, I'll make sure to use this because then you're getting just a lot of scenery and a lot of reflection. So you're getting a lot of low angle, high angle, and all to the sides. And so that's what I'll use. So that's another way that this is really useful. The final way that this is really useful is that it rotates. And so um, I've used this as kind of my uh, baby cam or uh, my backpack cam. So if I'm wearing a backpack, this will strap on to like one of the straps like this. And I can either hold it like this and it'll stick out like this right and I have like kind of like a body cam it's really jittery so it's not you know ideal it's a not a great way to um, capture things unless you're standing still right so if your hands are occupied and you want to capture something that's great but if you're walking it jostles around a lot not great um, even with stabilization it's just not the best uh, result but if you have like when I take the kids to like the aquarium or the museum and they're looking at stuff and I want to be interacting with them um, and not holding a camera, this I usually just put on a backpack. Or if I you used to have the baby when she was littler, I put it or more, more little. When she was younger, um, I would put her in the baby carrier, and then I would tilt this down, like this, and then I would get a little like angle of the baby in the baby carrier right here. So that's kind of another way that I use this. Um, this I bought. I think this is the third one of these that I've bought um, because the first one, I used it so much, the plastic here uh, failed on me. It just kept from tightening it and untightening it over and over again. The second one I bought, I bought for a friend who had just bought a GoPro and was starting to make videos. Um, I said, there's one accessory that you need for your GoPro and let me buy it for you because it was like five bucks. And this is the third one that I've had. So 
Uh, those are the two most important run vlogging accessories that I have. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of an insight as to how I do uh, what I do and how I make the videos that I make. And um, when it comes to like the tools, they're not fancy and they're not expensive, uh, but they're extremely useful. And again, it's not how fancy your stuff is. Um, a lot of times it's just being able to use an existing thing in a new and creative way. Um, and so, so hopefully uh, that's helpful to you guys and hopefully I'm not telling you something you already know. Um, but uh, if you have any questions about any of some of the other stuff that I use or questions about how I use this stuff, uh, feel free to leave it in the comments. I'd love to talk to you down there. Oh, what's going on?